normal. So um, we're just wanting to try and get a grasp, um, basically from from each one of you one at a time. Um, what we're going to do um, for 2000, 2014, or I'm sorry, for your needs for 2015 and you know over the next five years, and so it kind of gives us a a better idea or, or a better way to budget just with the changes in local and federal and and uh, state uh, funding sources. So we're not going to talk about funding sources. We want to need to see what uh, help uh, help us get a glimpse as far as what your needs are going to be going into 2015 and, and beyond. So. Um, any questions before we start getting rolling? We're pretty informal, so I think everybody knows each other. So. <laughs> no questions? <laughs> okay. Okay, it looks like uh, we'll start with Pauline. Uh, with you? Okay. You're the first one. <laughs> so, he's the five years? Uh, well, he's 2015 and then. Okay. Well, if you have something immediate or not immediate, but down the road and something we need to think about is um, my election equipment is over eight years old. And at my meeting last week, they were talking about that they mainly would be good for at least 10, maybe 15 years, but um, we probably need to consider putting money aside um, for the you know replacement of it. Now the cost is like for the electronic or the handicap plus the other one is comes about eight thousand piece for them. So eight thousand for the machine mm -hmm. that would serve both purposes. Did you say a piece or that's the total? That's the total for one machine or one thing together. And how many machines? Well, if we combine three things. We're probably looking at 17. That's the main thing. And I don't know about computers, I assume IT is taking care of that part. Yeah. Well, I think there's a, yeah, you have a plan as far as like um, replacement, scheduled replacement. So. And so you said that we're in year A, we're going into year A to a 10 year? Yeah, they're 8 years old now, so <coughs> 9. Plus, if I have to, uh, I did buy some of the iPads for photo registration to use, so if those work good, then that might be something like for the other, for some more proofing. Okay, so the iPads would be separate from the, they, yeah, they can't take the place yeah, of the voter registration. Yeah, they're just for the voter registration. For voter, you know, to go, to printing out the books, it'll all be on that iPad. Okay. That's not nothing in your clerk's office. We want to be scanners. The scanners we use, which we now we use with both the election and other than down the road, possibly redoing my office to make it more. And it uses things for customer scanning. <coughs>
meantime, we'll keep doing it the old way. <laughs> do you know, like, I mean, estimate cost of stuff, or do you know any counties that are, or districts that are doing that? Well, yeah, Leadmore does it. I can read you the Chris, you want it too? Yeah, that one. Okay. Um, okay. Another violent sign machine. We're going to order you to get a blanket warmer. Um, we want to go to some zero contact thermometers. This is the kind of where you shoot a <coughs> thermal and get their temp. Um, helps really get people who are all the way. It's going to be time probably to replace some laundry carts. Uh, another sit to stand lift. Um, one of our vacuums we're thinking we'll probably have to replace. So just basic things like mop buckets and housekeeping things, linen carts, garment racks. Um, and I'm guessing probably two computer replacements, so with me. Say something different, but they, those get transferred over to my budget too. Who buys them and then he builds me? I have to put those in there. So that is 2015 um, down the road. And some of those things were taken from this year that I looked at and they're still hanging in there. And I just kind of move them from year to year if they're hanging in there. Um, further down in the 16, 17, 18, We'll need to start replacing our dining room carpet, and then one year, one hall, another hall, and that sort of thing. Our 40 pound washer will probably be ready in 2016, and I imagine our 65 pounder in 2017, I guess. Um, and then every year, we've got floor replacements, all those random things that are there. Um, and then I'm guessing, with the amount of time that Joe Bryce has been on those dryers, probably a couple more years in our dryers and we replace them. What do you think, Joe? Definitely, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that's my uh, future. Closed dryers, just the Yeah, uh, closed dryers, that they're big, massive. <coughs> commercial style. Yeah. yeah. Do you know about how much those washers are to replace? The washer, the 40 pounds is about 7,000. 65 pounds is about 8,500. The dryers at last check were about 6,000 each. Um, carpet in the dining room, you're looking at probably 30,000. And then each hallway, you're looking at probably 20. Each time we get a hallway. That's so far. I mean, we kept good maintenance on it, so it's still in pretty good shape. So. Oh, years you mean? That one? In yeah, years? I mean, I, that well, was all yeah. 2015. 
what I read to you was the 2016, 2017, 2018. But most of these are, that, that the one and a half are things like the sheds and those kinds of things. Um, but the other, and the blanket warmer. But most of the other things are replacing what will probably die, is my guess. Do we have a shed? Do we have a shed? No. We don't, we don't have, a shed. have a shed. So it would be nice to be able to put some over. We have a garage. We have a big garage. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it would be nice to put. Our, our gardens are now looking really good. And uh, we now have a fair amount of landscaping stuff. So it would be nice to be able to put a shed out there with all of that.
any estimate on the camera system? It was around 25,000, and that's what parts and labor. Um, I've asked them to take into consideration uh, the our maintenance assisting with the end of the and I haven't heard back from them on that part. Be the hooks into the, the control panels and everything throughout in the, in the tower up there. I don't know about all entails to add cameras to that panel, like we're looking at. So uh, there's a lot of there's at least six cameras that are modules not have a camera right now. It's not, they're, they're bad. The uh, the rest the additions are more of a, a safety issue and an uh, audit issue from the U.S. Marshals. Uh, anything else you think of maybe as well? I think the software and the heaters were addressing those issues this year. Those would be the major. Things. As far as <clears throat> down the road, I, I would like to get uh, these vehicles on a, on a regular rotation bay, uh, plan. Of I've talked to some of those sheriffs and how they're doing it. And, um, four or five years is what most of them are doing. The uh, Lemmer County does theirs every four years. Ours have never really been on any type of rotation plan, and uh, I've, I've got them mapped out to where I believe it would uh, work out about five year plan, five year on the problem, and all the vehicles. And, you know, once we get to a point where we can replace some of the older equipment that goes in the vehicles, that uh, the new equipment that we purchase it can be reused on the next vehicle. So the, the one thing we have now is starting to the equipment, the equipment on the vehicles, lighting, lights, and um, sirens, and they have been taken, you know, taken beaten for quite a while. But all the ones that, you know, like the new ones we put on this year, well, in four years will be fine to put on other vehicles. So I may have to change a few things. Radios, joint communications, we discussed a few, few times. Uh, we're, we're still kind of on the waiting game right now. Waiting on state. We're supposed to know Wednesday uh, what the state says, what, what, what we can do. Um, it's all about position of the tire and, and things like that. The city has agreed to, to allow us to use a water tire to put it up and on. But, uh, until we give us the line of sight study, we don't know what uh, where we stand on that. And uh, as far as <coughs> numbers go, we have pretty much the numbers on radios, equipment itself, uh, the tower, or, or what the antennas. We don't necessarily have a solid number on it right now, but uh, the radios. We Radio equipment for cars and, and uh, mobile or portables. We have all those numbers. I guess one, <coughs> one thing I do uh, need add is the uh, in car cameras, patrol car cameras. We've got four right now that are obsolete, not working, and uh, there's no repair for them. Those are looking. We've had three different companies come in so far and about $5,000 a piece too. Anything else? Yes, sir. Uh, the is that just a few of them in your place? Or like so they're all at least seven years old and uh, they, they're just not reliable. If one works, then it breaks. And it, they're, they're obsolete. They don't have software for them anymore. So keep reloading the same software every time and it's just it's not working. Any questions for Jeff? Do you 
you keep a pretty good, hopefully you don't use a lot of animation, I don't think animation is going to triple the cost. It's starting to come back down. Well, we have a distributor that can get it to us any time we need it. We have a pretty good supply on hand. On your radio, did you have the, uh, is one tower going to be enough? Yeah, the, the coverage in the county is, is not necessarily an issue, um, except in a few certain spots, which was to define those, but the, uh, the biggest issue is the city, and we're with the bluffs and the hills, and if we, <coughs> we, we got to find out what the best place to put it in. It's probably going to be the 6th Street Water Tower, uh, or, uh, the Bellevue School Tower uh, out there, but the what, what they have to do is, it, I guess, it microwaves from one one point to it would microwave to the Huron Tower, uh, which is the state state operated tower now, and it has to have a pretty clear line of sight for it to microwave over there. And there was an issue of the building out by the airport blocking uh, that line of sight, so that's what they're looking at. The tower in the city, uh, if we had it positioned enough for the, as long as it works for the city, that's our biggest concern right now, because they're, you know, they're the biggest user of the system anyway, but uh, they, uh, they have to have a good spot where it can cover the entire, their, their entire cover area. So, uh, one, one, is one plenty? I, I don't know. Um, our south, southwest part of the county would be nice. If Jefferson County would, and someone maybe another county come in with us, well, that was what I was wondering because I thought one time someone was saying in the southwest there was a weak spot there, but I'm trying to think that the Jefferson County gun tower down there is not even being used or something that might be a possibility. I think they've been talking to one of the commissioners. I don't, I don't know anything about. Yeah, I, I, I just I think I, guess I I'll check with them and see, but I, I'm sure they said something about there may be one down that way somewhere. And Wes knew about one possibly down there, but. There's one down south of Nortonville, oh, yeah. south and west. South and west, right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I talked to the emergency managers of both Jackson and Jefferson, and they would like to see us all go together in the future at one tower of service all three. <clears throat> Which would help to break up the expense by three. Does KDOT have a tower? Not there. Jackson County itself doesn't have a tower. And Jefferson County, I don't think Jefferson County does either. Um, but they are, Jefferson County Sheriff is on the hundred now, right? He uses our tower. Yeah, he uses our tower. Um, and they have some dead spots out there. And Jefferson County is also looking at doing 800. Um, That's pretty good. But kind of following line of that, what that looks good. <laughs> so, everybody switches to it. I just wondered because I was at a meeting last week and Michael King, whether he was really pushing. Um, People being able to use the for the 800 mm -hmm. system their uh, K dot towers. Yeah. 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 Talk K dot into putting up a, another tower. No, but they'll let us put up one and donate it to them. Uh, and then we <laughs> use their system for free. <coughs> That's how that works.
old antique courtroom chairs that are probably here in the building was first built, 100 years old or better. And I went through and looked at them today. There's at least 15 of them that need to be repaired. They're either needing them glued, the spindles are breaking, the arms are coming off, and some of them are up in the jury box. So I think we need to definitely start looking at those. Uh, the judges have made a request to purchase a backup recording system. Um, the digital one that we currently have was 5800 when we purchased that in 2012. There would be a yearly maintenance fee, and I haven't confirmed this, but it was $870 at that time. And then we may need an additional computer to load that onto. Uh, down the road, we'll be looking at e-filing, but I don't know when that's going to occur, and I don't know if we will have a charge to purchase that software. And they never tell us to do it now, <laughs> so I don't know on that. Uh, we've also had some discussions, the judges and I, about the West Clerk's office. Um, we have trouble with the public wanting to come in and kind of look over the staff's shoulders and walk on into the office when they don't need to be there. So, I don't have anything definite this time, but we need to maybe visit with a contractor or something and get some ideas and kind of, kind of block that off a little bit so the public just comes basically to the counter. Have a little more security, is what I'm trying to say. And the wood counter, I like that wood counter that's in there. It's, it's not, um, well, it takes up a lot of space, but yet it adds decor. I mean, it's always in that court, so I don't know if anything can be done with that or not. And then the judges did have a question. They didn't know if it would be possible to have some funding available at times to tap into for electronics or education. And I also had one other question, if I may. Uh, we had the Central unit was on because it wasn't cooling the other day, and I got the bill for that. And I questioned, should I be paying that bill, or do you have a maintenance fund, some type of fund for the building? I'm sorry. Courthouse gym. Is what that should come out of? Okay. <coughs> That is my list. When you say electronics for education, do you know exactly what that entails, or is that... I don't know if they feel if something breaks down, can we replace it immediately? Which, I, now, I'm guessing. I haven't had a chance to visit with them in detail. That was just an email I got from them. And education, I know sometimes there's different conferences. I don't know if the judges are interested in attending some of those out of state. Because I do budget some for, for education as far as local policy.
There's no mold that could be behind the paneling or anything, otherwise it would have showed up on the uh, test that he made. So, to remodel it for that reason, it, it just, I mean, it would be just wasting money there, but I mean, if somebody wanted to remodel the room, that would be good, this is probably needed. But I don't have any cost estimates in the
they're changing the oil and brakes and tires like that, but when you smack into a guardrail and inside of the ambulance, we should get it fixed. Um, when you back into the garage door and bust out tail light, we should get that fixed. I don't know whether we need to visit the vehicles or the employees. Not real much you can do to it since they're not technically county employees. And they, I mean, they do have other equipment like our 12 they're doing a study right now um, <coughs> to see what would be good to replace those with because they are getting older. Those are very expensive pieces of equipment. I think they were pushing for a transport vehicle. In your opinion, would the ambulance be better? I know it's going to be more expensive, but my opinion is that the ambulance would be better because they can be used anywhere in the, in the master plan, whereas a transport vehicle would only be a transport vehicle. And you're not talking that much savings to buy a transport vehicle versus just buying a football ambulance. I do think that it might be good. At some point, if you would get a four one four wheel drive ambulance, um, and maybe it wouldn't be your primary user, but during the winter months, it would be nice. <coughs> about 
three dollars an hour below two two dollars two to two to three dollars an hour below uh, the surrounding counties, and, uh, which causes not the best applicants when we have an open for eleven something an hour starting. Seeing a lot of uh, dispatching or dispatchers and uh, corrections officers that pay about the same the same pay scale, and uh, I'm not sure I'm 100 believer with that. But the uh, Brown County starting at 13 <coughs> 13.40 an hour, uh, Jefferson County starting out at 13.20 an hour, and uh, we're starting at 11. The, the board is very concerned about that. I'm concerned about it a little bit more. The fact that if we do look at one thing, it's going to cause a lot of problems if we do just that. And that you know, the thing is where they are. Do those counties have as good as insurance plans? I remember we have a thousand families for you. Know, it's good. Um, I, that I don't know. Um, well, I mean, if you're going to. As far as 2015 goes, um, we're going to try and take care of uh, some minor equipment replacement this year. Uh, we'll start looking at that after we get through with May and June because those are our heaviest volume months. And then after that we can look at replacing some minor things. Um, but for 2015 we have two um, unknowns that will have a very significant impact. One of them being the city putting out their collection service to bid um, with one of the uh, things in the bid being that they don't, the city is not going to require a winning contract to use the Ashton County Transfer Station. They're just going to allow them to use whatever is the cheapest option for them. So we could potentially see 30% uh, less volume, but as we've kind of discussed, the, the impact really isn't in the revenues. It's our operations. We have 30% less to do 
then you know you can kind of pare down some equipment and cycle some other things out. And then the other uh, unknown is the Vetus. I haven't talked with them in quite a while, but last time I did talk to them, they gave a conservative uh, projection of about fall of this year to be ready. So if that goes into, a, if they do get operational, then we're going to see a significant drop off in C and D uh, volume as well. So those two um, have the potential to significantly change our 2015 outlook. Um, but as of right now, I would just uh, assume that we're we're not going to do any major projects. I mean, we have signage and stuff, but that's all minor. So uh, other than the city. Uh, when that becomes a known, then we'll have a better idea on the 2015 and years fo going forward after that. But we will have to get that interlocal agreement discussion started as soon as the city figures out what they're going to do. So, but so um, minor equipment. Replacement, I mean, dollar wise, what do you? Um, what well, we did sell the um, scraper, and I know that we had to find some uh, room in the budget after we had set our budget. So, uh, for that, for us to have that and a uh, $15,000 credit from Foley Industries, that'll all go into our capital outlay fund. So, um, we're, I mean, we're looking at about 70-ish um, thousand available in the capital outlay. So I would like to use at least, um, I can think of two things right off the top of my head that would be about 25,000 for both of them. Um, but depending on what, what exactly we'll need for the operations um, would determine you know, how new that equipment needs to be. So, I would assume that we spent about 25000 this year replacing some things with the balance to be determined after we know what we need or what we're going to be doing in 2015. Well, if I recall, I think we had <coughs> 15000 on the <coughs> capital outlay even in the actual 2014 budget, so we didn't have money in there. That what we got from the scraper that actually put it into the reserve, mm -hmm. the reserve that this year we had $25,000 to. We did uh, initially put in the 50000 but then after we sat down with the city and worked out that tipping fee, that 50000 was reduced to 25000 And then um, I know it's not ideal practice to use money reserved for capital outlay for operating expenses, but. At that point, it did look like a very real possibility, but now, you're right, we, we can either put that in the capital outlay or our uh, equipment reserve fund.
not including the 27 computers that we'll replace next year um, as part of our five year plan. We do need to focus on getting rid of all the XP machines out of our inventory, um, which I think we're doing since they will no longer support us that go in from this year. Um, but nothing, nothing large besides, and you do have to add in the hundred and some thousand for CIC into the contractual for this year for the whole county, but nothing large otherwise besides that. I think that was a formula that we were given. And if you if you want us to if you want us to revisit the formula and how it breaks down, then we can do that. We're just we're just using the formula that was given to us. Okay. 
Some of this will kind of hinge upon this one item. will hinge upon how quickly we, we may be looking at a different building. But the installation that's in the current building, that's on the in the warehouse, is falling, and there's birds in there constantly. And I have to keep the chemicals. I've always kept the chemicals wrapped up so that <coughs> you saw how it was and when you came, because um, they get birds dropping on them. There's several birds that are in there all the time. So we talked about maybe looking at spray insulation or something like that, that even whatever the future holds would be a value to the building. And I keep it, um, chemical needs to be kept above 40 degrees so that it doesn't um, freeze because the thawing process is quite extensive if it does. So that would... Even an inch of the spray foam, they said, adds a decent R value. So it's looking at like seven thousand dollars replacing that, because that's the original installation of the building, and I think that's like 1978. And then um, very soon, the spray system that's on the back of the truck needs to be replaced. Looking at probably 2015. The existing sprayer was purchased in 1994. Um, it was on the other truck, and then Wes transferred it over to the green truck when he, right when he first started. But the new system that we would look at would be on skids, so that it could be placed on a different truck down the road, which brings me to the next item, probably 2018, 2019, replacing the current truck, which is a 1999. It has 72,000 miles. Um, so in 18, 2018, 2019 would probably be getting close to that century mark. And then we could easily take the spray system off of the truck now and put it mounted on the new truck. It would be a minimal cost for doing it that way, but it's minimal when you can put it on skids and transfer it over. And we could use some of the existing equipment as backup equipment too. Um, since we only have one truck, if that system goes down, then we're completely down. We're a lot of counties have two or three trucks, so they're looking at a complete different setup than we are. But that's kind of what what I think it
rotate another grader out. And um, also, our dump truck fleet is getting in sad shape. And um, um, I was actually um, at the Kansas uh, County Highway Association meeting last week, and um, they actually had a KDOT spec'd out dump truck there that Leavenworth County had purchased. And um, they're nice trucks. They come completely set up with a plow, spreader. Um, the 2050 trucks have uh, stainless steel beds on them. You don't have to worry about those rusting out. And um, each one of those trucks fully equipped is $155,000. Uh, Leavenworth County actually bid those trucks um, this year, and that was cheaper than they could buy the truck without any equipment on it through the KDOT bid. Um, and I would like to get our dump trucks on a 10 year rotation. Um, so, my goals for next year would be uh, uh, rotate out the grader and two dump trucks. Um, 2016, I'd like to continue the uh, grader program and also uh, one more dump truck in 2016. And then also possibly a, a pickup or two for um, you know shop use and just uh, the guys out in the field. Um, 2017, that would be our last grader rotation. Um, then we would have all four graders rotated out. And also in 2017, um, I've got scheduled a new oil distributor truck. In 2018, that'll be an off year for the greater program. Um, I'd like to um, get one more dump truck 2018, um, possibly a new chip spreader, because um, the one we have now, I mean, we're getting by, but it's like a 1972 model. And um, also in that year, a, a truck tractor. And then in 2019, we'll start our, our grader rotations over again. Um, I've got the grader rotation out to 2022. Um, as far as equipment out that far, I don't have, you know, I don't have about five, six years. Um, that's as far as I went on the equipment so far because it's going to be kind of hard to go any further than that. We can the dump trucks and the graders if we get them in a a set rotation. Um, so that's what we're on. Your graders, your, your so on the next one, what's the next one for the rotation? What year is it? It is a 2002, I believe. And then what we got? Um, I think you probably give us that inventory one time. Right? Yeah, I don't so actually have the inventory with, with me. Yeah. I didn't write what I get for you. I guess my thinking was possibly that we could split two dump trucks. Like maybe we could even do two years graders and skip a year and maybe get two dump trucks sucked in there and here we don't do a grader and then go back and get the graders. In the off years, in other words, we try to suck two trucks in. Right, the only problem with that is uh, our trucks aren't going to last that long. Um, there's no way we can make it to uh, um, 2018. No way. Well, I'm not. I'm, I'm saying you may even after this year we can skip a grade with two, 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 two trucks in 16. I mean, right. We try to we try to get one done this year and then and then skip two because yeah. they're pretty. You know they. Those, that, the initial the initial shock of getting those graders is, is right. the thing that we got to overcome. And yep. Once we get past that, everybody I've talked to says you can't believe me. It just yeah. it's and, so uh, much easier to budget because you've got that guaranteed buyback yeah. price. Yeah, right now um, the graders um, uh, say this year, 2015, you know, you're looking at a um, $234,000 grader with maybe a $40,000 trade. So um, you're looking at you know almost two hundred thousand dollar machine, whereas with the guaranteed buyback, when we go to buy a new grader in 2019, 
Well, it would be looking at eighty-five thousand dollars. So you're right. After you get past that initial shock, it's going to be good. Yeah, and that's that, that's that's your cost over five years. So too. Right. Yeah, we're looking at a little over sixteen thousand dollars a year per grader. Plus whatever maintenance or the well, tires that you which you right, yeah. have to do anyway. For yeah. it, but, yeah. but as far as maintenance, uh, should be very limited. Is there more uh, that ever before? It's buffered, buffered. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. I'm just and saying. I mean, so I to that. Um, also, uh, the only uh, bad thing about skipping the year is because in the off year, um, I've got a chip spreader and a truck tractor, you know. Um, um, and also, I didn't have a back on here. I keep hoping that maybe Chase would have uh, uh, rotated out a grader and maybe we could have got one of his, or a, uh, 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 excuse me, a uh, backhoe. And maybe we could uh, um, did some dealing with him on a back hill. You got two. I have. Mm -hmm. Well, if the volume goes down, it'd be a possibility. It, it, it would wouldn't be, a be shared or something. Like yeah. That. Well, I think we got to get past that. We got to get the departments working together. If we have to share and work out some kind of deal because it's essentially coming out of the same pot. So mm -hmm. like, uh, and I, we do a little bit of that now. We use, on, a, on occasion, we we'll use our loader out the up and down, you know, transfer station. Um, you know, we've got two, <coughs> two backhoes, but uh, they're getting quite a bit of age on. Or you're yours. Huh? Or you're yours. Uh, they're, they're the ones that uh, you guys give us when you bought new ones. So they're about five years. They were the ones that were bought brand new in '95. Okay. So they're like '95s. Okay. They're the ones that were bought originally when the transfer station opened. Okay. So, so the 2000 ones would be. That'd be a huge upgrade. So this is this is your only wish list here to give us. No, this is just a <laughs> that's the <laughs> one. <started. laughs> I thought you forgot one key piece. And um. You know, I could polish this up a bit, and I didn't really type it up for you. Polish it up a lot. No, I say it's pretty shiny right now. <coughs> shiny is this way. <laughs> well, I guess uh, it just depends uh, what the commission um, wants to do. You know, uh, I feel the road bridge were neglected for many years. Um, it kept being put off, put off. Next year, next year we'll do something. Next year we'll do something. Next year never came. It's starting to come around a little bit now. We're going to have to get in a rotation. Um, to get everything up in shape, we're looking at four hundred thousand dollars a year. Is what we're looking at. So, um, I didn't realize the condition of the equipment that I took the tour after I got on that. There was maybe two nicest pieces of equipment and three or four average and the rest of it just all off the junk. So, well, let's build the, the county philosophy in all the years before would be they'd buy a grader and they would just they'd run it into the ground. They'd just keep running it and running it until, you know, 16 years old. Um, it cost us a fortune in maintenance until that piece of equipment wasn't worth anything. Well, uh, this buyback thing, uh, that, that is something kind of new. You know, it's not to say that it will go away. Mm -hmm. but right now, if you can get by that initial, you know, and we've downgraded from five to four. Right. <coughs> so that part is not that, I mean, we'll have to have to absorb it for four years. But like I said, that as long as that buyback stays in there, it's that puts an awful good cushion, a pretty mm -hmm. darn good uh, maintenance for you there and, and your maintenance, you won't be coming in here for a seven thousand dollar bill because yeah. that'll be one I mean, yeah. like you have before. Yeah. So yeah. So your maintenance costs will go down to the down Right. Well that was uh that was my high points on the uh, machinery. Um I didn't know did you want guys want to talk about the new maintenance facility or uh, just if you're still in it. Well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> I would like to. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I didn't know if you wanted to go into that. I don't have a lot on it yet. Well, um, I, I, think it's, I think it's early, but I don't. Um, I 
I do know that do not be afraid to get around and look at this. Uh, I went to the commission meeting there and found out that, that new one was built down Council Road. I'm not sure it would meet our needs, but yeah. they sure had a lot of good things to consider, and, and it wasn't near as expensive as what I thought. Oh. B and G told them it cost them seven hundred thousand. They did for less than half of that. I've actually got four plans um, that I've been showing these companies. Um, I don't know if you want to see it now or later or something. But we got anybody else? On <coughs> yeah, we still have maintenance. Right. Okay. Um, did you want to talk about my plans for? Um, uh, we hit the the equipment. Um, yeah, what about keep rolling or? Um, what about like <coughs> maybe talking about like road bridge plan? Right. Yeah. Like a long term trying to trying to. Yeah, I've been uh, working on a, a bridge replacement plan, a uh, five year plan if you want to call it that. Um, and I actually rated all of our off system bridges with my own system <coughs> as much as I could because. Right now, all of our bridge files are are at Schwab Eaton, so I haven't been able to look at those. Um, there was two other categories I wanted to put in there um, to finish that out, which I haven't been able to do yet. I've been talking with KDOT, and KDOT's actually going to rate our bridges for us um, in the priorities that KDOT would replace our bridges. Um, so that'll be interesting. You know, another tool to look at, um, see, you know, how they rate them. Um, so did we just waste some money in So we just waste some money in there? No, like you this would use. Is, yeah, this doesn't have any of the bridge types yet. That would be, uh, uh, it's just a, how KDOT would um, score. score our bridges to be replaced. Uh, and we're not talking about the 20 foot or shorter culverts. We're talking about the uh, actual bridges that are in their uh, bridge system already. Um, it's a little bit bridge that Lord wanted to see. Mm -hmm. uh, is that those that you put together? I mean, they're, yeah. they're the less than 20 foot. Is that the oh, one? actually, the one we looked at is the 24 feet. Oh, it's a 24. Okay. Yeah. Because the guy on Council Grove showed me some that they put in, and they mm -hmm. were on the bridges that actually didn't even permit because they were less than 20 feet. Right. And you know, gosh, they looked awful good. And then right. for twenty thousand dollars, that was. Yeah. Uh, the one we put in was uh, uh, 24 feet, and it was 48 foot long, and it was seventy thousand dollars. Uh, it's a little bigger structure. Well, yeah, that's why that because he talked to me. These were they were set, you know, they were just under the mm -hmm. 20 foot where they were right. required, you know. So, right. and he was talking the 20 to 30 thousand, depending on right. how how big it was. So mm -hmm. and they look and they're pretty. Easy. Some of them they could just about assemble and take them and put most of them in before they even get there if the conditions are right. So. Yeah, yeah. Some of them you can. Uh, they're light enough because they're made out of aluminum. A lot of uh, counties will actually build them. At their shop on a rainy day or something in the in a shed, um, pick it up with us there, sit it on the low boy truck, take it out, set it in a hole, and you're done. Back to work. Um, I did uh, run some numbers. I know Jeff has brought up the um, idea of possibly going 100% hay dike next year mm -hmm. for our uh, chip seal program. Um, if we would do 40 miles of chip seals. Um, the conventional way using the uh, limestone, um, we'd be looking at uh, $13,840 a mile um, for that. If we went to Haydite, we'd be looking at uh, $17,264 a mile. So if we did 40 miles, um, the Haydite would be $136,960 more than using limestone. So uh, I've got it both ways. Um, I'll have it both ways in my preliminary budget and we can look at that um, and see if uh, you think it's worth you know, going to that. Um, I think it's definitely under my traffic runs. Yeah, that and the urban. Yeah. Um, 
I did talk with one county that says that they had, um, when you get up, uh, I know uh, when you get up to some high traffic on intersections, they said they had a little problem with the crushing, um, but I think that was kind of an isolated incident because I haven't seen any problem on you know, the road KDOT roads. That was uh, one county that was telling that. Uh, our road project uh, next year, I'd like to uh, continue our project um, on Edwards Road. Um, the next two miles uh, from four, 246 out to 116, and um, you know, we're looking at um, close to 200 thousand dollars for for that. Um, uh, I know. Uh, um, but I tried to put a little bit of everything here for everybody. I know Jeff had uh, brought up uh, also uh, overlay instead of uh, chip seal. Um, I did put in here on next year's budget a two inch overlay on a Pratt Road from 286 um, around Pratt and Country Club Road to the city limits. And that's just about a mile. Um, and that uh, two inch overlay, that would be a total of $78,560 to do that. Um, and that's something probably look at in the future, possibly, uh, you know, 286 coming in the Atchison and Pratt Road curve around to the city limit, possibly in 2016. So that's a pretty high, that's a high road. Um, uh, bridge project. So of course we have the uh, uh, old 74 highway. It's 310 road now. The culvert replacement. Um, now we funded 50% by KDOT. Um, so um, uh, half of it is $55,270. Um, that might be inflated a little bit because um, I know we were going to have some. Uh, uh, in kind services, uh, you know, we're going to replace it ourselves. Um, that might be a little on the high side, but um, not a lot. Um, 206 uh, west of Rollins um, in uh, 2015, um, partner with Lumworth County. Um, there is a, a small bridge there. It's kind of a bad bridge, it's kind of on a skew. Uh, I know Bill's familiar with it. Uh, partner with Lower County, they've agreed to pay 50% of the cost on that. Um, Jeff, south upon that first bridge where you hit it kind of an angle, you know, mm -hmm. of course you're probably not that far, maybe not that far. No. Yeah. These upon the corner, we'd probably be looking at, the, you know, a 26 foot wide bridge, 30 foot long. Um, our share is going to be around $30,000 on that. Um, also, uh, this is kind of preliminary, I'm still looking at them, but I've got uh, at least four bridges uh, that I'm looking at for next year to uh, that we could uh, put in a big culvert and replace. Um, I know a couple of them are up on Pawnee, um, up by the State Lake. Um, a couple of them are up there. There's one... Uh, down at uh, on 214 west of Lincoln Road, we could replace that bridge with a culvert. And also, uh, there's one on Lincoln, just south of 214. Both of those are um, three or four ton bridges. Um, and I've you know I've been trying to you know look at those. Um, I've got those uh, pistols in here for twenty thousand dollars a piece. I think we might be able to get them done a little bit cheaper now, but I think. We might have to hire a consultant to get those done. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get them through, uh, get a permit without getting a consultant to help us out a little bit on those. But I've got right now um, $20,000 a piece on those, which, you know, if you get a look at a replacement bridge, that's a fraction, you know, you're looking at probably around $7,000 a piece to replace them. Um, I think I've hit most of the high points, so... Tony Bridge. Um, I was hoping Pat would be here um, so I could find out the status on her right away. That's what we're waiting on.
but the reason why I'm shooting for the 100,000 is because it would allow me to apply for a grant. Uh, that would, they would go to 90,000. Of course, it's an 80-20 grant, so I mean, technically, all we'd have to match is 18,000 or whatever it is. But uh, if you do 100,000, that seems to be a, a good number to get the grant because it's a highly competitive grant. The Heritage Trust Fund is. The year that we got Memorial Hall, I don't remember it was. There were several million and just a small amount that they awarded, but they had several million that people applied for. So. But, uh, I mean, if you want, I can go through what all the courthouse needs. But well, we've been through it with 360 and rows, and we're all in with our <coughs> But I think last time we did it, I think you talked about the windows was maybe the biggest priority. The windows, the, uh, the stone work, the tough pointing of the stone, there's. Uh, mold or whatever it is that grows on the stone if you look on the east side and it's just going to multiply real fast it's going to, the longer it's on there the more it's going to cost to get it cleaned up and sealed again. What uh, number can I do with their court house? They sandblast it because it looks nice. If it's historic uh, you can't hardly sandblast it anymore. Well, it, it, it looks nice. It looks like brand new. Well, if you look at Memorial Hall, that's what they can do with pressure washing them now because they've got chemicals now that uh, uh, really clean up a building. Where before we had people come in and they'd say, well, we can clean it up. We'd say, well, here's this stone clean for us. And when it was done, you couldn't tell it was clean. Uh, you know, did nothing to it because that black, I don't know what it is, but it's really into that stone. But with the new chemicals, I mean, you can look at Memorial Hall, I can even show the pictures before and after. And before it looked really bad, and they did a good job of it, uh, I think. And they also pointed the stone up and <coughs> the stones back and stuff like that. And on the east side here, it's getting where it's getting pretty dark, and it's going to just multiply real fast, you know, as it goes. So, and then the, the basement, Jeff was there, and I showed him where there was some cracks where the stones need some pointing down at some point. So. And then right behind you, there's a, that roof that's leaking, and it, it, this year it should be replaced, but it could probably go to next year. Uh, and then there's two other roofs and a bunch of other stuff. I mean, I could go on and on. So, 2015, <coughs> what's your, what, what are the, what's the most critical or critical? What I would like to do is go to MoCan because they're the ones who write the grant. They don't charge anything if we do not get the grant, so it's, it's free unless we get the grant. Uh, and we pay them a certain amount every year anyway, so uh, they do it fairly cheap. But $100,000 is, is probably what we would have to have in order to have the state give us a grant. If we didn't match that much, they would probably never give us a grant. So what project would you choose to? <coughs> well, I would go with them and say, you know, what is the state approving right now? Because some years it's glass, some years it's stone, the next year it's could be heating and cooling, roofs, and, you know, it's... The big now will have My thinking is, right now we're thinking if we got to do a dam devastation, we got to do a frozen bridge, and if we bomb them, <coughs> and you don't get this done, you have to make any payments until, or get the bomb until after the first year, your first payments are not going to come down until 2016. I guess I'd like to see if we had an idea of what windows are going to cost. I mean, that, that's, that's a 40 year at least life or longer, and that, that's what I'm looking at with the buildings. Now is a good time if you're going to bond anything with long term, do it with the interest rates the way they are and spread this out over a long period of time. So I'm saying you can, we can buy ourselves a year if we work this thing just right. And uh, so. Well, it would definitely be 2015 before we can even get it approved as far as What I'm saying is, is I mean, if, if that's something that, yeah, we can, we can, uh, you can, you can include it as we know that, then we go in and get in a bond situation, we can have enough money in the bond to cover. We have a pretty good estimate, like, say, just windows. Then, even if we budget you 100000 and fix up for us or do stone work or something, we can go ahead and get that done. You know, in one budget cycle, the windows would be a 20-year cycle, a 20-year payment. 
just what it would be. Just, that's it. I haven't shared that with you. I just was thinking about that when we were, once we rejected those bids and decided we were going to have to start with a new facility, probably one. Now we've got two facilities you can look at. I think you're going to attract contractors pretty, if you have two projects that are going to be somewhat similar. I think you'll really, I think, be amazed at what we possibly can do. I think you'd want to look into a roof system, too, along with the one. Because I don't think you can do the heating, cooling, and windows. You can't do the whole wall. You couldn't do the whole wall. You might be able to get the outside structure kind of tight. That's what I was saying about, you know, if you had $100,000 with the state funding that they would give you, you know, you're talking $210,000, $218,000 that you could turn that $100,000 into. So that's a pretty good investment, I would think. You know, because you've got 25% tax credit, you've got a $90,000 maximum that you could put your inheritance trust on. And you could always use it on this roof here if we didn't get the grant. This roof here is going to be more than that. Do you have any idea what guesstimation, what you think the roof might need to be? I had it in once, but I hate to tell you because I really don't remember. I was thinking $120,000, $130,000, I'm thinking. For the windows? No, for the roof. And the windows, it depends on how we have to do them. Do you know what they cost, like, at Memorial Hall? I'm not saying it's the same, but do you know what it costs? The windows weren't that bad down there. I think they were $40,000 for three sides, $30,000. We at one time discussed that when we did. Yeah. I'm not saying it's the same, but it kind of gives me an idea when you're dealing with circle structure. Also, they're huge over here at the courthouse. Some of those are 9, 10 foot tall. That makes a huge difference in glass. A bigger piece of glass is a lot more expensive. Plywood don't work either. Not too good. Although it might have to here if we don't do something. Now, that was just a thought from a financial standpoint. I mean, if you could, I really got one. I don't really like the bar management, but this is a time when we have all these long-term capital projects that should last us 40 years or so. And if you can get interest the way it is and spread this thing out over 20 years so that some of our younger taxpayers get involved in helping pay for some of this, I just think it makes sense to consider. It doesn't mean we have to do it, but I think we need to consider it because there are some things that have been put off. Yeah, and this roof here, I mean, your newer roofs, they were about 30 years or something. You can get them the way they last 30 years. So this is a 15? 18, I think, was a guarantee on it, wasn't it? I think. It should be about a 25-year roof is what it should be. This one should be. It should have been. I think they've kind of missed out on the technology of the... Yeah, that was right. ...the existing system itself. Well, I think it'd help if you could... I know you don't have to do today, but, like, all these different things. I mean, if you can kind of get them, like, prioritized, like, between now and, you know, over the next five years or... and some cost estimates would help us, I think, tremendously. We've got that plan. We've actually got that. I mean, when 360 did that, I mean, we had that deal. But the stone point, that stone point, some of that's not foundational stuff, which gets to be kind of serious. It can be a pretty expensive endeavor. He was showing me some stuff last week. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things at the courthouse. I mean, it's over 100 years old, by the way, so it's... and it's not had the best of maintenance, so... Not to say it's had the worst, either. I mean, it has been maintained. The longer you let those things go, the more expensive they get. Well, as somebody mentioned, if this can just keeps getting kicked down the road, that's not solving the problem. And then all of a sudden, you've got a problem with everything, which we're just... we're there now. Right. It's hard to correct it all at once. Yeah, that's very true. Routine. Yeah. Well, I don't know why I hear about it through the community, but it's my role here. What's another mail, you know? One more cuss word. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Hall. Thank you.
way this has already been solved, but uh, we may be looking to buy a decent mower and and so we can maybe maybe even hire somebody just to mow. And, and we talked about that. We just discussed that last last week. Because uh, honestly, I, and I don't, Joe helps us out a ton, and him out mowing grass is helping us a little bit around here. I think we would send an email. We, we, we try to coordinate what all departments, what, what they use for mowing, and, and so we could kind of get down to what kind of mower do we need. Maybe we need to have one person only or hire somebody in the summer to do only mowing or something like that. You, know? Do you want to be included in that? Because I know we had yeah. maintenance, solid waste, road bridge, senior village. Senior village. Those are the four departments that we knew about hand. Well, we, I guess we were lumping in yours with the courthouse, I guess. I just, and I don't mean to mean disrespect anybody, but, you know, Matt and I were talking about this the other day. You come into town, and we're talking about some some properties out on 59 Highway that look bad, but you come by the, the, the shop and see the buildings that they have there, and then you come up here and you got, you know, you know, Tom does a great job mowing with what he has, but I mean, it's just with with better mowers and better somebody just dedicated to doing that. I think they can improve the looks of everything that's in the county. And you go up to Senior Village; they have a pretty decent mower that I've seen in the past. But um, you know, I think appearance is just nice, and it wouldn't cost much just to have one person take care of the exteriors, whether it's Tom or whoever it is. I don't care, but uh, somebody that, that makes us look Presentable. Well, yeah. that's what we're talking about, like the the equipment. You, you know, having like one nice piece of equipment, being able to handle. I mean, with what we have now, you, you know, you're having to split it among multiple people, and it's we we just had a conversation. Was that Tuesday? Was that last Tuesday? Tuesday? We just yeah. we just discussed. Yeah, I think Joe's going to even look discuss it by a trip, you know, because we have to move this thing around. A little bit. So, yeah, I mean, we got just to speed it up. To me, it sounds like we got about six or eight mowers, and we haven't got any more either. It's just kind of cheap. <laughs> I don't know if you're going with that thing on county rescue, but it ain't got a hood on it. So, I mean, it's. Could you did mates with the push pipe without the motors? You're going to want to supervise me. I knew that was coming. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I just think, yeah. you know, just landscaping, little things like that. I, and then no offense to Joe, I mean, he probably does a fine job, but I, he's, he's an asset inside the building to me, I mean, uh, to help us with the things that we do, and, and over the courthouse, wherever, wherever else, but, and, and Brian Oswald's had all these ones mowing up there, but I mean, he probably will overqualify to mow the grass. You know. Well, I, I think that's where, you know, we work with Matt, I mean, because we did a couple of positions, but he's taken and he's hired from summer when he does so much chip and seal and you give him authority to hire some summer help. I mean, maybe Joe needs to have that authority or Joe needs a budget. But that person then, I mean, you know, because you got people going to have vacation time, that person just does a lot more. You know, yeah, I mean, it doesn't cost that much to hire a summer person to do that. I mean, it wouldn't even have to be necessarily a 40 hour week, but you'd be surprised when the kids oh, got you. Yeah, I if you had to cut everything out that you're looking for. Well, you could, yeah. I mean, but if so senior bills, you, you, you need to coordinate it. Some of these people may have to want theirs cut, I mean, you know, too. But there's a lot of grass because there. You know, the senior bills get a lot of grass. You know, yeah. The bank on that side. But, I don't know. I, I would like to see it, I mean, my personal opinion, it would just be nice to have somebody take care of the grounds. And, you know, it's just, just like any, like we're talking, it's, it's routine maintenance. You know, you let, a, let the shrubs get away, or you let you know, mulch wash down the hill, or whatever. I mean, I don't have time to go out and mess with it. Mm -hmm. um, I will if I have to, I guess, but it should be nice to have somebody dedicated to the, to the ground. And whether it's a full time job or not, I don't really necessarily care. But, uh, but if we were talking about uh, just all this big on landscape, for instance, I mean, you know. I mean, would you be able to use inmates to help do some? If you're doing some, some you're able to putting in, not like not only maintaining, but I guess we can do some of that too. But I, I guess that would help. That would help us out as far as labor cost wise. But can you? You just get into a situation where you have 
have some trustworthy, trustworthy guys sure. to go out and do it, and they're only here for a month. You know, I mean, then, then you got to find somebody else to do it. And then, you know, you got to train, train them to go, have them mow, and I mean, just that's the problem with the inmate. You know, I think you could probably use some inmates on the initial, you know, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, this is the very first time, okay, let's tear all these shrubs out. Let's do this and that. They can help with that, but then after I understand. We have, we have guys who love to do it, but you know, and I'm not talking just that, but there's there's um, watering the watering system outside that needs to be maintained. Um, you know, I noticed a couple of them were bad. The other night was up here late when they came on, and it was just shooting straight up in the air. And, you know, things like that that aren't you know. Um, Somebody that's outside that can appreciate it, to look at it, I guess, you know, to, to make sure that all that stuff's working. And, and we got um, you know, showers and pods down and our cells down that we can't, can't use because our maintenance guys are going grass, you know. That's a nice thing to be beneficial to have somebody dedicated to. Well, we'd rather have somebody like the Joe's qualifications working on facilities and using his expertise and stuff more. And that's that we were literally just talking about this last week as far as trying to you buy a quality mower the the you know, cut your the, the time in half. You know, yeah. a zero turn or something big. Now having having that out here I don't know if it's feasible and you may have to continue to use something small in certain certain areas but uh, I don't it's been used all over the place now. Yeah. You know, the other problem with using inmates is, is like Jack was saying, they switch all the time. Yeah. And you get some people, you've got an expensive piece of equipment, you give that to them. And anybody that uses equipment, which we all have, <coughs> they a lot to care about. They don't have to appreciate it. Yeah, and I agree. Yeah. I was just yeah, thinking about shit like just. Yeah. just Doing something big initially, like you're digging, or you know, you're tearing stuff out, or using them for stuff like that. I mean, just a thought. I mean, it would help. Uh, it's not cheap. I mean, it, it's still money, so I mean, anything we can do to help save. It. Maybe we also need to look at the outsourcing, see what that would cost. Probably gonna be a lot more expensive. You know, summer help is about as dependable as the inmate. <laughs> <coughs> if you could find, yeah, you know, there's there's people out there that could do it. It's not necessarily just summer help. It's gonna be spring, you know, spring and fall and summer. You know, it's really not mowing anymore, or no leaves are left on the ground, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I'm sure Tom enjoys doing it. I mean, he seems to take a lot of pride in doing stuff out there. So I don't know if that's. Now, Tom does an excellent job, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> but if we're going to be doing all of this, we do that. Then you need to personal. You know, that's a. Okay. Probably cut down. That's what I was just thinking. We cut down costs on, you know, by just having one person do all the grants. You know, not everybody's buying equipment. Now with Tom, he's got quite a responsibility over here. He's got a lot of ladies to keep happy. <laughs> I was going to say, we call every so often need help with something else. I mean, he, you know, there's a lot he coats and moves as barge and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, every department that has anything to move it on, he's the one that does
try this a little bit different, different pace. So we appreciate you showing up. I do have a question though this year. How are we going to handle the budget? Is this like in the past? Are we going to have a sheet that we fill out, or is it going to be some nice sheet? Or you'll have a sheet. So it's so all there, just like pretty much. Yeah, just, just like last time. Okay. Actually, I have a question also. Um, I asked this question once before, and I got a very vague answer, I guess. Um, should we put it in there for budgets, or how do you want us to? You mean for salary increase? Right. I would say at this point, just leave it everybody same. We will even know what our valuation is. We know what it is. And then because, I mean, we've got two different, we got, we, we can either do salary adjustments, we can work on health insurance. I, mean, I, I think the discussion has been if we want to revisit our health insurance, if we can do upgrades to that, that's the same as an increase, mm -hmm. you know, instead. I know that in the past, sometimes there were confusions and one, a couple of departments put in for raises and a couple right. wouldn't and right. some people thought they were getting into the shaft. And yeah.
fair anything to, to the city, really, but, you know, they did only one and a half, you know, cost of living areas, that's what you want to call it. Uh, you know, it, it bumps everybody's base pays up, you're starting, you're starting, you know, you're, you know, you're rookie or whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it, bumps, bumps that up, you know, and that your pay scales stay competitive. And, and that's what we discussed last year is, you know, if we don't stay competitive, then we're going to continue to run into these problems. The, 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 you've got to I give these people something to work for, you know. And, and, and I, I think we need to figure something out as far as um, giving this job. I know you can say insurance and all this other adjustments and stuff, but it doesn't matter. Still have one bucks an hour. Or, you know, well, he's talking about total compensation. And I don't think a lot of people have seen that. And that's where these performance evaluations would be key is that you would sit down with your with each employee at least once, maybe twice a year, kind of doing, you know, it's not only just the monetary. I mean, there's a whole other side of it, like how are they doing performance on the job. I mean, I, I think our goal is to try and get some sort of system where everybody's sitting down and, and, and on the same page. Because I think there's, we got a lot of variation in, in departments. We have some departments that probably aren't doing any sort of, you know, performance evaluation or even discussing necessarily goals. You know, it's kind of a big picture, but, um, but you know, if, if we can, I know what you're saying, the, the dollar per hour, or your, your total salary is what everybody's looking at, but, you know, you know, there's something to be said about total compensation, too, I mean, it's not. Total compensation, the only, the only difference from county to county would be insurance. Mm -hmm. But that could be significant, too, It could be significant, yeah. But the capers, you get stuff like that. So every county pays capers. Yeah, every county. I know, but I mean, it's still part of the total compensation. I know, but it would be a different than any other county. He's compared to county to county. Yeah, but I mean, you got to do a pure side. You know, typically, like, you, I see what you're saying, compared to like Third, pure You're making thirteen fifty an hour. That does affect your retirement. Right. No matter what your insurance costs, you're making thirteen fifty an hour, and that benefits your insurance, your, your retirement. So, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with compensation of, of insurance. I mean, 1350. I mean, that's the future. And uh, rather than making 1125 an hour, that's great for now. Yeah, because we're getting decent insurance, but I don't have the money in my retirement. Like, you know, but if they, they don't use their health savings account, that's their money. That is their money to use. <coughs> if they do not use their health savings money, that is now theirs. We have not. Yeah, they have not used their health savings money. That is now theirs. We have not thrown it to the insurance company. It's now their money to use. That's the one plus side of that. <coughs> um, they use it up, that's what I understand that. It's been tough to use because I've been denied. <laughs> so I understand yeah. the things you're going to have, but I mean, it's. I, I, I don't, I, I, I just, as far as getting the pay where it needs to be, yeah, and that's just in all departments, for one, the, the job, is, the job, yeah, we can have, you know, like city has firemen, police officer, and uh, public works. Uh, they're all on, they start at 1459. That's their starting pay. And it bumped everybody up. It bumped, bumps everybody else up 1.5%. Same amount, you know, 1.5%, but not anything to a jailer downstairs. So, um, but does, does the job of strip searching inmates down here? Uh, in the jail and, and dealing with things like that, does that compare to sitting in the office over here eight five Monday through Friday? And, and these guys aren't, you know, going out in the middle of the night pushing snow or um, you know things like that. I, I, I think there's a, a big difference. In, and um, you know, you have dispatchers here 24/7, you have jailers here 24/7, you have deputies here 24/7. They all do different jobs. Uh, you know. There's people that have to go home and be on call. I don't know if they get compensated for being on call during the winter or whatever, but um, that's, that's kind of a, a benefit, I guess, from working over here from 8 to 5 Monday through Friday. But, um, you know, the, the whole thing um, with, with pay scales, yeah, yeah. You know, the city, they have three different departments. We have quite a few more. And I don't, and not any of them are really similar. And, you know, we, they can, county attorneys, girls can complain that they're not making the same as the sheriff's girls. Well, 
they're not doing the same jobs. And, and we shouldn't even compare them. And it should be department only. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, over there in the courthouse, they take the five money to it's a little different story. But uh, these guys are they're, they're dealing, dealing with these inmates down there or pushing snow at 2 o'clock in the morning. Or, uh, I, I don't know, I, I think they deserve something to work for. Well, the reason I said like Jack, <coughs> we can't. I don't want to make a promise I can't keep. I'm going to say we would look at it. <coughs> what the state legislature is doing is it appears that they're going to do it in the future. We got a lot of uncertain things coming. And I'd hate to lock myself into something that, that I'd be ashamed of to do it again. And you've heard how many capital projects we got here, too. So um, we're going to have to weigh all that out as we put the budget together. I mean, if we, we can so totally focus on the salaries, okay, how many of these other capital projects are we going to have to put off to do that? Because once you lock into that, you're done with that. I mean, you, you, you're locked into that for as long as you've got those positions there. So. You, you, you're right. I mean, you're right. I'm not going to argue that point. I mean, it's just a matter of, <coughs> I just don't want to admit anything, because after I've seen the legislators did this year, and what they're planning on, what they'd like to do in the future, is not going to make our jobs any easier whatsoever. We've had several pretty good commissioners quitting that go for re election this year, and they see what's coming. Well, I mean, I, I, I understand. I'm just kind of speaking for everybody, but it, you know, last year the, the way races or didn't, did or didn't go, you know, it, it was pretty. Pretty depressing, right? Really. You have to listen to all that. And At least there was some. I'm not going to start talking about my department. Uh, right. I mean, I, <coughs> it, it goes all around here. It's big. I mean, it, it just goes all around. And it's it's not, a, not a good atmosphere to be in if you have to listen to that. Uh, it's a tough balance. I mean, like Mike was just okay, there's a lot of capital projects here on the table. We're going to have to. We have to balance that as well as response to the. You can't complete those projects if you don't have the employees. I mean, that's that's another way to look at it. You know, because you know, if I'm constantly training people down here in the jail, um, you know, it makes it pretty tough to, to have federal inmates in here. It makes it pretty tough to have Douglas County inmates in, and we don't have the staff. And you know, I've got the gal's quitting now, and she's worked here for I don't know, over ten years, maybe close to ten years now. She's going to be a security officer for six dollars more an hour than she's been doing that. And, you know. So we're going to have to deal with that. We, we deal with that on a daily basis. <coughs> yeah, but your long term cost of training people and rehiring and, and, and stuff, it, it, it does take a toll. Why not? It does. Uh, you know, we, you, you can try to utilize part time help, it, 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 it doesn't work. I mean, you're only available when you're available. We've talked about doing like maybe some sort of wage salary survey. I know we talked a little bit about that. It's all we were doing, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while since we've had some. I've been working on that. Yeah, so I, I think that would definitely help us out as far as knowing what else is other counties and stuff are coming. Uh, we know all the, I mean, I know pretty much what most of the surrounding counties are, and that's, you know, uh, of course, Ludmark's kind of a different story than the other one. But in Brown County, they don't have the job we have. They don't have the inmates that we have by any means uh, way behind. Well, I'll, I'll just give you an example. Like um, uh, Miami County, south of Johnson County, I mean, th their biggest problem is their turnover because they lose staff members going to Johnson County just because they can pay a lot more. Mm -hmm. you, you know, there's some counties that we aren't going to be able to compete against. You know, some Johnson counties, County you know, may get for down with the more. <laughs> <laughs> we can't compete against Brown County. Well, I know, but some, sometimes it's harder to get people into smaller counties, so therefore they have to pay more. They also have generally less staff. Now that, that, that's a common fact. I mean, that's, there's nothing in common with, with, that, with that fact. I, I don't know on the law enforcement side, I would agree with that. But, you know, if someone wants to be a law enforcement, or they're, they're going there to work. I mean, they know that I can take that much. I mean, it's, uh, I, I, don't, I see, I can see it in surrounding Johnson County. Yeah, 
look back, uh, you know, whether there's 12, 11 uh, PD officers that used to work here, and you know, I went straight down the hill as soon as I could. And that was just mainly because of pay. So, pay pay's falling so far behind. But I, I don't know about Matt's pay, I don't know if it competes with cities or how, how it is, but you guys got to do two different things as well. So. You say this. Thank you. 